Hi, so I'll be covering the basic solo growth model in this video and possibly a couple of other videos. So what is the solo growth model? It's in essence just a theory of economic growth which builds on the classical production model by adding a theory of capital accumulation. This means that we endogenize the capital stock in the model. So the model describes how capital increases through investment and decreases through depreciation. Capital accumulation is then shown to be a possible engine for long-run economic growth. So this model is important to know because it is widely used in policy making and it's often used as a benchmark for other new growth theories to see how they perform next to a very simple model like the solo growth model. So to understand what the model says and does, we first need to understand the assumptions that it makes and I'll also just discuss some notational points so in the future when we're looking at equations it should all make a little bit more sense. So the first assumption that we make is that we have a continuous time t. Uh, this basically means that the model is a dynamic model so variables can change over time. We assume that the initial value of a variable x is given by x subscripted naught so the time of the current period we define as zero and its value at time t is xt. Uh, so for example, consumption at time t is given by ct, consumption in period one is c1, period two, c2, and so on. We denote aggregate variables by capital letters and per capita variables by lowercase letters. So we have this definition, lowercase x is equal to uppercase x uh, divided by labor. So again, if we have capital per capita, that will equal just capital divided by labor. We assume that the population is LT, so it's L at time T. Um, population grows from initial, initial level L naught at a constant rate N. So we have constant population growth rate N. We also assume that households save a constant proportion of their income. This is proportion S. So savings equal to investment in equilibrium are equal to this savings rate S multiplied by output. And if we look at this in per capita terms, savings equal or savings per person per capita equal this savings rate S multiplied by outputs per capita, lowercase y. We have national income accounting such that y equals C plus I. Uh, so often we'd see this equation as y equals c plus i plus g plus net exports, but we assume that there is no government spending and there is no net exports. We're in a closed economy, so we get rid of these terms and we just have y equals c plus i. We assume that the capital stock depreciates at a constant rate sigma and the capital stock is increased by investment. So this equation holds true. We have the change in capital over time is equal to investment in that time period minus the depreciation of the existing capital stock. Uh, we could also write this as the law of motion of capital, which says that the capital stock in time plus one equals to the capital stock in time t uh, less depreciation. So we subtract depreciation there and we add investment at time t. Sorry for the handwriting, but yeah, capital stock uh, depends. It is reduced by depreciation and increased by investment. We also assume that we have technological progress, uh, which we call, which we have in this parameter A, and so effective units of labor are defined by A multiplied by labor L. So we have this productivity or technological progress parameter A growing at an exogenous rate G. We also have a production function, which is output equals a function of capital and labor over time. And this production function will also depend on our productivity parameter A. Uh, but we often use a Cobb-Douglas technology function, uh, which is shown here, output equals uh, this Cobb-Douglas function. So again, depends on uh, technological parameter, capital and labor. And in a Cobb-Douglas function, the inputs of capital and labor are weighted by this parameter alpha. 
We also assume that returns to our production function are positive. So if we increase our input of labor, this will increase our output. If we increase our input of capital, this will increase our output. But we have diminishing returns. So as we add more and more labor, the marginal return to that labor will decrease. So these derivatives basically just say that. We also have constant returns to scale, which is shown by this equation here. So if we increase both inputs, um, so labor and capital, by some parameter lambda, uh, this will also increase the output by the same parameter lambda. So if we double both capital and labor, we will double our output. And we also have these Inada conditions, which basically says that as an input x uh, goes to zero, its marginal return is equal to infinity, or it's infinite. Uh, that basically is shown, for example, in a Cobb-Douglas production function. Imagine that labor is going to zero, then that means from the form of this function that our output is going to zero. And if we increase labor to something positive, then our output will also go to something positive. And if we go from zero to something positive, that's an infinite return. And the same is true that if this input is going to infinity, the marginal return to that input is zero. Uh, this is uh, the case because of our diminishing returns, we said uh, in a previous assumption. So as we have infinite labor, uh, adding a bit more labor will give us zero returns. So we're going to start by formulating a basic version of the solo model. So we'll start by assuming that the population is equal to the labor force. Uh, we're going to assume that the labor supply is fixed, so L equals L bar. And we'll assume that productivity does not change over time, so the parameter A is equal to A bar. and to make it even more simple, we'll just assume that this is equal to 1 for now. So with these assumptions, we can write our production function y equals a function of capital and our fixed labor supply L bar. Uh, we want to get this in per capita terms. Uh, so we, have, we want y equals y over L bar and lowercase k equals capital over L bar. So how do we do this? We do this by the fact that we assumed our constant returns to scale, which was this, that lambda y equals a function of lambda k and lambda l bar. Uh, I discussed what that was before, uh, but what we can do is we can use this equation of constant returns to scale and just choose our lambda to equal 1 over our fixed labor supply. This is just a constant. Uh, so from this, we can see we can substitute in that 1 over L bar for lambda to get the y over L bar equals our function of capital over L bar and 1, because L bar over L bar is 1. Uh, using our definitions, lowercase y equals a function of lowercase k and 1. And because 1 is just a constant, we can write that, we can write it as this. Uh, we've got lowercase f is a function of lowercase k, capital per capita. So now we just have that output per person only depends on capital per person. And this is the general idea of the solo model, that your output per person just depends on how much capital each person has in the economy. So let's derive a few more important equations for the solo model. We'll start with the national income identity, which I mentioned before in one of the assumptions, y equals c plus i. We can write this in per capita terms by just writing down the lowercase versions of all of these variables. Uh, we have a consumption function, that is c equals 1 minus s multiplied by y. This comes from the fact that a constant proportion of individual's income is saved, and whatever is saved uh, isn't consumed. Whatever isn't saved is consumed. Uh, 
So your consumption is one less the savings factor times by y. Uh, so what does this leave for saving? So we have saving equals y minus consumption. Anything that isn't consumed is saved. Uh, we can substitute in this consumption function for this c here to get that saving equals to y minus 1 minus s times by y. And if we do a bit of algebra, we can see that that equals to lowercase s, lowercase y. Um, so as I say, saving is just a constant fraction of per capita income y. And we, so we can also use the, this equation that we have above, the lowercase national income identity, and rearrange it to subtract c from both sides. So i equals y minus c. And if we see, we have this is equal to saving uh, from this equation up here. Saving is y minus c, uh, which is also equal to sy. So we know that this investment is equal to sy. And we have that in equilibrium, investment equals saving. And so before we derived that lowercase y equals a function of capital per capita. So how can we use this? So we know here that i is equal to sy, uh, y equals sy, and we can substitute in this equation here for this lowercase y to get that i equals s times a function of capital per capita. Uh, so now what we're going to develop is the fundamental equation of the solo model. This basically says that investment increases the capital stock and depreciation decreases the capital stock. So a change in capital stock per capita is equal to investment. This increases the capital stock and what decreases it is depreciation of the capital stock. What do we notice here? We have i equals to s times this function of k. So we can substitute that in and we get that change in capital is a is the savings rate multiplied by some function of capital per capita minus depreciation of capital per capita. And this equation here is what we call the fundamental equation of the solo model. Um, so this determines the behavior of capital over time. So this change in capital uh, depends on these uh, just couple of variables, depends on the level of capital we're at and the parameters of depreciation and the savings rate. And this in turn determines all the other stuff that happens in our model because everything depends on capital in the solo model pretty much. Um, for example, we know that output depends on capital. We know that consumption depends, depends on 1 minus sy, uh, which is 1 minus s as a function of capital. So consumption depends on capital, output depends on capital, and we now have this fundamental equation which tells us how capital develops over time. So now we can take all these equations that we've derived and put them in one place and so we can start thinking about actually solving the model. So that's, I guess, how we get any sort of inference from this model. We want to look at solving the model. So we have four endogenous variables, four variables that uh, change in the model. These are output per capita, capital per capita, consumption per capita, and investment per capita. And luckily enough, we have four equations in these variables. So these are our four equations that we've developed. It's that y at time t is equal to a function of capital per capita at time t. I'm adding the time subscripts now. I didn't before just for simplicity, uh, but we are in a dynamic model, so we should really be subscripting our variables with what time they occur. We have our fundamental equation, which says that the change in capital for 
time t plus 1 is the investment you had in period t minus the depreciation of the capital that was in period t. We also have our national income equation which says that consumption plus investment or per capita is equal to output per capita and our fourth equation is that investment at time t is equal to the savings rate multiplied by our output at time t. So we can now solve for these equations but if we want to do that at every point in time it's very difficult. Uh, it's not as simple as just saying we have we have this um, income, we have this investment consumption and capital per capita because this is a dynamic model. These variables change over time so at every different level of t, especially if we have continuous time, there's infinite different values of these variables. Doing that by hand is very difficult. So what we tend to do in the solo model is we look at transition dynamics, how these variables change over time. So for example, uh, this equation is how capital evolves over time. And we also look at how these variables, um, the values they take in the long run. So as t tends to infinity. And do we do these uh, variables keep growing infinitely or do they reach some kind of steady state where in the future they are just constant at some level or they grow at some constant rate. So to keep this video a bit shorter I'm just going to derive the steady state in a separate video to break it up a bit as this one's getting quite long. So go and click on that video. Uh, it should be in the same playlist as this one was.